Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. A very good evening and a very warm welcome from us to all of you on this second session on of Edelweiss Connect Classroom. As usual, it's always a pleasure and uh, we are very happy to connect with all of you using this medium. It is tax season and uh, January, February, March, uh, these three months or the last quarter of the financial year or the first quarter of the calendar year is usually the time when a lot of us are evaluating the various options available for investments or maybe even deductions in order to reduce our tax liabilities. And hence, we thought we should help you by sharing with you all three very, very simple tax planning options which are available to all of us as investors of mutual fund schemes. As usual, uh, you know, in case you have any queries, questions, thoughts that you would like to share with us, please use the chat window to put that up and I'll be happy to respond to them towards the end of the session. Let's look at what is, what is going to be our agenda for the, for the next about 25, 30 odd minutes. We'll start with what are taxes. We'll then talk about the types of taxes that are that that, that we are subjected to, subjected to. We'll talk about the key difference between tax planning and tax avoidance. And then lastly, we'll move to the crux of the of the of the, of the topic today, wherein I will share with you the tax planning options available with each one of us as investors in mutual fund schemes. Okay, let's start with what taxes really are. Okay, uh, tax is the most basic and primary source of revenue for the government. It is a sum of money which you pay, which is charged to you by the government at, at prescribed rates in lieu of the services that the government provides. The tax money earned by the government is then spent uh, along with the other revenue uh, streams that the government has for various various initiatives. It could be, you know, infrastructure development. It could be, uh, you know, the defense expenses, you know, and strengthening strengthening our defense equipment or or our defense needs. It could be on a lot of subsidies. So, I mean, in the last two years, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, all of us would have probably taken a vaccine. And uh, some of us may have even gone ahead and taken it for free uh, at the government and in centers. But the government was paying for these vaccines. And the money that the government was paying was obviously coming from its sources of revenue. And tax is one of its largest sources of revenue, not only in India, but across the world. Tax is predominantly the revenue source for all governments. Okay, when we talk of taxes, there are two broad types of taxes. One is the direct tax and one is indirect tax. Indirect tax, if I were to give you examples, then income tax, property tax, inheritance tax, gift tax, all of these are examples of direct taxation. In simple words, uh, the tax that you pay for the revenue and the income that you have earned in any financial year is the direct tax that you are paying, okay? And then there is indirect taxes. So for example, customs duty tax, entertainment tax, service tax, GST, uh, goods and services, uh, you know, which is more commonly known as GST, they are examples of indirect taxation. GST, which was implemented on the 1st of July, 2017, uh, you know, many, many, many people believe has been uh, you know, one of those big reforms, which has helped in streamlining the indirect tax structure of the country and bringing it on par with the other developed and developing countries of the world. Okay, so so that's that's the type of taxes. Then let's talk of tax planning. Okay, uh, so like I was saying, in the first quarter of uh, the calendar year or the last quarter of the financial year, a lot of us start 
looking at what are my various options in order to reduce my tax paying liabilities. And that's where tax planning comes. In. Tax planning is nothing but a legal recourse to minimize my tax liability by deciding on the investing investments or by seeking deductions as allowed within the scope of law. It's perfectly legal and it is something which all of us can do in order to reduce my tax paying burden. Okay. The important part that we should be looking at is to understand the difference between tax planning and tax avoiding or evasion. Like I was telling you, tax planning is perfectly legal. You are allowed to plan your taxes or plan to invest your money or seek certain deductions as allowed by, by law uh, in order to reduce your tax paying, li tax paying liability. That's perfectly allowed, okay? Uh, it does not invite any penal consequences if you go by whatever is allowed. There have been a lot of judicial precedents in which you know people have uh, you know uh, gone to court and they have won wherein if they've done something is perfectly legal uh, you know it could be individuals or corporations whoever when they when they've gone ahead and you know one cases are you know wherein if there's something if they've done something perfectly legal then that's allowed tax avoidance or tax evasion is illegal plain and simple and since it's illegal uh, you know, obviously, then it is not permissible by law and it is punishable. Uh, any person, organization found to be evading or avoiding taxation is liable to penal consequences. It could be uh, either 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 putting them under behind bars or a fine, depending on the level of uh, you know whatever avoidance and in or evasion of tax that has happened. Okay. Let's now move towards the core part of our discussion. And I would like to share with you three very, very simple, effective ways through which you can plan on reducing your tax paying liability by your investments in various mutual fund schemes. The first one is, uh, you know, the very popular equity linked saving schemes, uh, more commonly known as ELSS funds. Uh, these are available by mutual funds and any individual can, can opt to invest in ELSS schemes. These schemes that are invested, uh, you know, if you invest in these schemes are uh, come under the ATC ambit. The uh, ATC, as you would all know, is one of the most popular, uh, you know, spaces wherein uh, popular, popular, popular sections, wherein a lot of investments and deductions are allowed, uh, and people can take advantage of of their investments under ATC up to the tune of one lakh fifty thousand rupees, uh, and this amount is is then reduced from your tax paying burden and competition and uh, that's where this 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 scheme fits in so we'll talk about atc we'll talk about elss a little more in a little more detail in subsequent slides then next is uh, you know uh, is about uh, long term capital gains tax on equity or equity related schemes investments in the equity or equity related schemes, so direct equity or mutual fund schemes, up to when, when redeemed, and let's say the capital gain is up to one lakh rupees. Okay, then that goes tax free. Any amount over one lakh rupees is subjected to long term capital gains tax. During the course of our discussion, I would also share with you a few examples of how you could use this uh, in order to reduce your tax paying liabilities. So that's the second option. 
and the third option is using the long term capital gains option available in the fixed income schemes so long term capital gains in uh, in fixed income schemes if you redeem your fixed income uh, investments after a period of 3 years you can choose uh, you you are liable the gains in that are liable to long term capital gains and there is an option of indexation there is i mean over there not only an option there is indexation benefit which you can claim for your investments in in the fixed income schemes which you have redeemed post completion of 3 years we will also be looking at examples and i will be sharing you sharing with you uh you know uh, a scheme which is available under under mutual funds known as target majority schemes where in which you could use for your benefits under under for for your for your for your investments and benefiting from those investments with in terms of the long term capital gains tax okay so so that's that's what i'm going to cover and i'm going to share with you various perspectives various examples with regards to these three options available atc as i was telling you a, a, a few minutes back is one of the most popular and favorite sections through which we can reduce our tax taxable income by making investments in various tax saving investments and incurring these legit or incurring these eligible expenses so up to 1.5 lakhs every year uh, is the maximum deduction allowed okay uh, now some of the very popular schemes which are there under atc could be your uh you know life insurance premium could be uh, you know your your provident fund personal provident fund the ppf schemes uh you know then there is nps over there then there is uh, you know uh, a five year fd which is available then there is elss so what i'm going to do next is just share with you some of the more popular examples in this sheet and uh, and give you a perspective around around all of these so as we can see i have picked up a few schemes which are very popular so there's elss there's nps there's ulips there's tax saving fds uh then there's ppf then there's senior citizen schemes national saving certificates and sukanya samriddhi yojana so there are various schemes available and all these schemes predominantly come with a lock in period it could be uh, according to an age that you reach okay so in terms of nps when you're 60 or in sukanya samriddhi uh, yojana when when the girl child reaches 21 that's where the redemption uh, is available and there are investment options basis which there is a there is a risk angle allowed over there so the volatility so for example elss predominantly invests in equity equity st equity stocks and hence the risk element goes a little high nps you have an option to invest in equity or and and do a mix similar to ulips and then tax saving fds ppf senior citizen saving schemes and the other options are low on risk predominantly because they invest on the fixed income side similarly there are the returns or the average average returns that you can garner for these investments so clearly if i look at uh only return perspectives maybe elss then looks at me looks to me as the best available option however as i was telling you a few minutes back that along with the short period that is there so it's, about, it's just for 3 years right uh there is also because it's equity it's a little little more volatile in comparison to the rest and hence in terms of the volatility and the risk element it 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 goes up a little uh, it's good it goes up a few notches so in terms of that it is a little higher so in comparison to the other options available hence you know if i were but if i were to now just look at you know the various lock in periods available and let's say there are 5 years 5 years if we have the 15 years let's say my average is uh, anything between 5 to 7 years if i extend my my investments you know in elss schemes over this 3 year period and stay for that 5 to 7 year period okay uh, what this will do is because i am staying longer 
the volatility would obviously then get far more reduced at the same and hence you know in terms of you know uh, the risk elements uh, you know you would probably find it little less riskier uh, due to the longer tenure that you're spending in this in this scheme at the same time uh, you know uh, you could still garner these double digit returns over this period so in that sense you know if if volatility is an issue my suggestion would to you would be to instead of you know looking at it as a three year option you know extend that and you know invest for a let's say 5 6 7 year period uh, due to which the the volatility will be curtailed and at the same time you could still get a uh, much better returns or double digit returns uh, or higher returns in comparison to other investment options available under the atc umbrella so that's where i think uh, that's one strategy which you could use for your elss investments in order to somewhere you know have curtailed volatility at the same time enjoy uh, better returns from other products available okay so as i was talking to you uh, it is the shortest amongst all tax saving investments it's actually it's just a three year lock in okay and uh, even though it been the shortest it holds the potential to offer the highest returns amongst other atc options so it gives you predominantly two, two options a uh, tax deductions b because it's equity linked it is also giving you the option and probability of wealth creation but for wealth creation obviously uh, the idea would be that you stay in longer and don't look at you know redeeming as soon as the lock in goes over and uh, that's that's the approach which i would i would want to follow if i wanted to optimize these two twin benefits of tax deduction at the same time help my money create more money to give you in a nutshell elss investments are easy to track easy to invest easy to withdraw and they give us uh, you know a very very good potential or high potential to get inflation beating returns or higher than inflation returns so that's the benefit which elss schemes under the atc umbrella offer to all its investors you could choose to invest either in one go or you could choose to invest periodically more commonly known as sips uh, the systematic investment plans uh, on a monthly basis and both these are available for atc deductions for whatever investments you have done in the course of a financial year so that's what elss elss is you know uh, let's move to the next part which is the long term capital gains okay so long term capital gains uh, for any gains on the equity side and fixed income side are liable to taxation so on the equity side uh, the long term is is post completion of one year so if i have invested any money and one year is over for that investment uh, then whatever gains i have in that scheme will be subjected to long term capital gains tax uh, the rate fixed currently is 10% plus 4% uh, for any equity or equity related schemes similarly then there are fixed income schemes Uh, wherein my investment period has to go beyond three years, if I want to claim long-term capital gains. Okay, so in equity it was one year, in fixed income it is three years. And post that, uh, I get the benefit of indexation for my gains on the fixed income side. we we'll, we we'll do examples too while uh, you know while we reach them and uh, and and with those examples probably i'll help you uh, you know uh, decipher your 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 tax paying liabilities under both these umbrellas okay 
so let's fast let's first start with your long term capital gains in equity schemes as i was mentioning investments in equity or equity related schemes redeemed post completion of one year are subject to long term capital gains tax okay if redeemed prior to one year uh, uh, and there is a gain it's subjected to short term capital gains tax okay so in any financial year if your withdrawal is 1 lakh or less than 1 lakh then that is tax free anything over 1 lakh is where you pay your long term capital gains tax let me give you an example okay so for example let's say you invested 10 lakh rupees on uh, uh, 1st jan 2021 today we are on, we are on 11th feb 2022 let's say you you put a redemption and your total value is 11 lakhs okay uh, and let so your investment was 10 your your today value that you redeeming is 11 so your capital gains is 1 lakh rupees uh, if this is your only withdrawal from equity or equity related schemes then this 1 lakh rupees is exempt from any taxation it is tax free okay now let's assume that this is not 1 lakh rupees but let's say your corpus on redemption is 11 lakh 50000 Okay, so if it is eleven lakh fifty thousand rupees, uh, okay, same example. First, first Jan you invested twenty twenty one. You invested ten lakh rupees. Let's say today eleven Feb you you redeem uh, your corpus value is eleven lakh fifty thousand rupees. Okay, uh, just giving you an example, uh, you know, to to make this a little more uh, easier to decipher. So now one lakh fifty thousand rupees is your capital gains. One lakh from this. is exempt so you take that out the other 50000 that is left is what is your taxable long term capital gain so when you took a look when you look at it as as a 10% value then 10% of 50000 is 5000 rupees and if there's a 4% cess then 4% on that is an additional 200 rupees so roughly you pay about 5200 rupees as your as your tax on the 1 lakh 50000 rupee gain that you had from your investments in equity or equity related schemes over a one year period okay uh, so that's that's an example which you can use for your uh, that's that's just 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 an example for you to uh, you know have have probably a little more uh, you know clarification on how this long term capital gain stacks is liable to each one of us to optimize this you know what i also suggest is if whenever you know you want to redeem your investment uh you know let's say you are redeeming today and you want to spend it over over the next few months uh you know or you're redeeming primarily because you think uh, you know you want you want the money for your own self but you don't need it together there is an option very very smart option in mutual funds known as systematic withdrawal plans so anybody who's looking at regular income from investments uh, should use it or even if let's say i don't need regular income but i need i don't need i'm removing lump sum today because i need payments to be made over a period of time you should use systematic withdrawal option uh, for your redemption purposes in the same example let's say that we were talking let's say you had 10 lakh rupees and today it's become 11 lakh rupees or 12 lakh rupees whatever let's say you re- you withdraw up to average 8000 rupees uh, you know to be exact it's about 8300 or uh, rupees that you withdraw on a monthly basis which totaling up post one year will be close to about 96000 rupees if you if you withdraw 8 lakh 8000 rupees uh and let's say up to 1 lakh rupees if you withdraw anything over 8000 rupees this amount if that's the only withdrawal in in terms of your equity or equity related instruments which are liable to uh long term capital gains which will then come to you is tax free so doing a systematic withdrawal plan for anyone wanting regular income is a very very smart way through which you can reduce 
your tax liability as well as you know have tax free income coming to you on a month on month basis up to the tune of about 8000 rupees okay so that's that's the second way through which we could we could use uh, the mutual fund investment option for garnering uh, you know uh, income at the same time saving on or or reducing my tax paying liability and burden let's now come to long term capital gains on the fixed income side when you talk of fixed income side long term capital gains are paid for investments in fixed income which have which you redeem post completion of 3 years okay so the way it's very honestly done is you know you have a purchase cost let's and then there is there is an indexation value in the year of redemption uh, divided by the induction indexation value in the year of uh, you know purchase and then whatever this value comes you subtract it from your sales price i'll give you an example to build this up so don't worry uh, you know to make this easier uh, you know uh, but what indexation very very honestly does is it helps you in reducing your your tax paying amount when you compare it to your regular option which is you know adding it in your in your income and paying as per your tax line especially for people in the higher tax brackets so that's that's why indexation becomes a very very strong tool uh for anyone wanting to invest in fixed income schemes because along with you know you getting gains it also helps you in adding up to those gains by reducing your tax paying burden due to the indexation benefit which is being made available for all investors in the fixed income schemes of mutual funds okay let me give you one scheme which i think uh, you know is an apt scheme for this you know so these schemes are known as target maturity schemes or target maturity funds they've been gaining a lot of popularity uh, of late and a lot more lot number of people are wanting to invest in the target maturity schemes these schemes generally invest in government bonds and highly rated bonds of public sector companies okay and because it's government and psu bonds in terms of safety they go very high hence in terms of any default probability this risk is almost negligible the default risk over here because of you know the type of quality of papers that's there is almost negligible okay uh, so that's that's the first benefit of these schemes second schemes you know if you look at the way these schemes are structured uh, you know so target maturity schemes buy these gsex and psu bonds and generally hold them up to maturity so what uh, so they don't trade right and because they are holding it up to maturity uh, your your you know uh, gains are aligned with the maturity dates in the bonds the first thing okay uh, and more so because it's 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 aligned with what am i going to gain it's very predictable that this is going to be my gain and this is where approximately my maturity amount is going to be okay so in that sense uh, you know target maturity funds become a very very apt investment for any investor wanting to be low very very low on default risk have a safe and predictable return and uh you know has an any has an investment horizon ideal investment horizon that people talk about when it comes to tmf uh, or target maturity funds about 5 to 6 years but there are target maturity schemes for a period of 1 3 5 across up to 10 year period and they are available for anyone to invest in so that's where i think these schemes should be very very seriously looked at because coupled with the safety 
uh, in terms of uh, you know low default risk in terms of the predictability of returns uh, they over a three year period also give you this benefit of uh, indexation so the, as i was talking to you about long term capital gains in fixed income schemes when redeemed post completion of three years you get the benefit of indexation so how does this really work let's say i mean let's take the same example again let's say you invested 10 lakh rupees in 2019 let's take a date let's take a, you know 5th april 2019 okay and let's say on in 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 may 1st may of 2022 you go for redemption let's say you invested 10 lakh rupees today what you get is 11 lakh rupees just as an example okay let's over a three year period you made level like rupees i'm just giving you an example uh, i mean it's hypothetical okay uh, and now the first thing that you do is you look at you know there's a there's a chart known as cost inflation index chart uh, which is which is produced and where you have a value for every financial year so the the cii chart for 2122 uh, is at 317 and for we 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 invested on 5th april 2019 so that comes under the 2019 and 20 chart where the cii value the cost inflation index value is 289 so i divide 317 by 289 i get a value of 1.09 i multiply this with 10 lakh rupees so i get a value of 10 lakh 90000 rupees if i have made 11 lakh rupees as i was i was talking as an example uh, then my tax liability is only on that 10000 rupees so i pay 20% of that so it's about roughly about 2000 odd rupees which i pay okay just giving you rough numbers for example if you had less than 1090 uh, due to due to the indexed value being more uh, you would not be paying tax okay so this 10000 is something which is liable to tax under the indexation uh you know benefit uh, and you pay over there uh in comparison to let's say any traditional investment and let's say you would have created the same value let's say your capital gains in any other investment would have also been 1 lakh uh but it does not offer indexation benefit to you in terms of long term capital gains then you would have paid as per your tax slab and if you would have been in your highest tax slab category then that would be 30% so in 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 this in this example that we are talking then that would become 30000 rupees so 30000 visa v 2000 technically what you get is 28000 rupees extra in terms of just the indexation benefit being made available for your investments so this is where i think uh, you know uh, investments in fixed income schemes can be really optimized for the benefit that it offers on redemption in terms of long term over 3 year period and like i was saying if you invest in target maturity funds you get a uh, you know stable safer in terms of low risk in default in terms of predictability of returns at the same time with indexation benefits a lower tax paying amount on your investments in the fixed income schemes so if i were to just sum up these three options first is elss where you have which comes under the atc umbrella so up to 1 lakh 50000 rupees invested in elss schemes uh, is liable for deduction and uh, you know uh, in terms of returns as we uh, as we see as we've seen uh, the average returns have been far better in comparison to the other options to curtail the volatility instead of you know staying invested for only the lock in period which is 3 years if you extend this to about 5 to 7 years it could be somewhere where you have curtailed volatility at the same time returns which could be helping you in beating inflation very very comfortably so that's your first option uh, in terms of second option that we spoke about we spoke about long term capital gains on the equity or equity related schemes that you have Uh, that you invested into long term capital gains over there are available for investments over a period of one year uh, so if you if you redeem post completion of one year up to 1 lakh rupees it's tax free anything over 1 lakh rupees 
you have to pay tax in terms of 10% uh, and and 4% of cess uh, you know so you could also look at the systematic withdrawal plan option to optimally use this uh, for your regular income uh, which up to the tune of 1 lakh rupees over there too would be tax free in the hands of the investor then the third option is when you're talking about uh, long term capital gains in fixed income schemes wherein you could if you stay invested in any fixed income scheme for a period of 3 years uh, you get the benefit of long term so it's it's then it comes under the long term capital gains umbrella wherein you have uh, you know indexation value as your taxable amount which as we were seeing in the example reduces your tax 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 burden uh, to, to a certain extent what you could also do is you could look at you know target maturity funds uh, as an option to to get yourself a little uh, you know lower in terms of the risk of default in and keep yourself invested in a little more predictable safer return a predictable return environment and at the same time uh, if you if you stay invested over a 3 year period you can get long term capital gains which are at 20% of your gain value of indexation okay so that's what i had uh, let's see what questions do we have and i'll be more than happy to uh, you know respond to your questions okay so there's a question which says ltcg for all investments is plug maximum at 15% does it mean the tax on land sale for ltcg is reduced from 20% to 15% for all sales done after 1st uh, april 2022 uh, indexation still stays at 20% uh, so it's it does not mean that if uh, if you're looking at indexation it will go below uh, 20% uh, below 20% uh, what is better tax credit or a tax deduction uh so it depends you know uh if if you have investments then i would think tax deductions are better and and that should be something which which will work i mean in terms of tax credit uh it it's tax credit is used when you have uh, some uh, when you have already paid for some taxes so it it's more for institutions i would i would look at it, you know should i itemize or claim the standard deduction could you please elaborate and uh, give me a little more on what your expectation is in terms of your question i'll be more than happy to respond to that okay so if there are no queries and questions uh, we can we can uh, we can we can close our 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 meeting today as usual uh, you know it was a pleasure from our side uh, you know to connect with you all and uh, and we hope to continue bringing you uh, interesting and topical topics which will help you uh, analyze and make prudent investment decisions or even even if it's not investment decisions uh, you know topics which are currently uh, becoming popular or people are talking about will will help you decipher those in the coming sessions uh, so stay tuned and you know keep looking out uh, for our next sessions uh and uh, we will we will we will we'll, we'll be always very eager and happy to connect with you all thank you very much and have a pleasant evening mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully